In just a few theater seasons, Philippa Sue has created three iconic musical theater heroines, Natasha in Natasha Pier and the Great Comet of 1812, Amelie in Amelie, and of course her Tony-nominated work as Eliza in Hamilton. Here the rising star in her new role as a woke aspiring politician in The Parisian Woman, her high school triumph in tights, favorite Hamilton backstage visitor, and so much more on this week's Show People. Hey Pippa, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. How so are good you? to see you. Look at you, you back on Broadway so fast. I know it's crazy. You're like you're on a roll. You're just like you're yeah. Like, you're clicking. Yeah. Your career's clicking. It's really going. <laughs> I saw the Parisian woman. You're in a play. Yes. I don't want to disappoint you know all the musical fans out there because that's what happens when when people know you have a beautiful voice and then you're on stage not using it. There is a little bit of disappointment. I'm sure. I'm sure. But this is my first play in New York that right. I'm doing. So, you know, I hope that it's also exciting for people to sort of see me talk for the first time. Because <laughs> I've also, I've been in these shows that are very much just strictly singing. Yeah. Singing all the way through. So yeah. it's, it's, I don't know, it's fun. It's and you like, know what's cool? You're a great actress. Thank you. Look at you up there. Yeah, I'm serious. Thank you. Like, I, I really enjoyed it. Thanks. I really enjoyed the role. I really enjoyed the play. Yeah. It's, uh, it's twisty and turny. And, oh my God, it, it, one of my favorite things happened when I saw it. This is like a, like a, a thing I love when audiences do this because it makes me roll my eyes. Yeah. I love when audiences react when they hear the title because the title <laughs> of the play is spoken at some point. Yeah, they and, say, oh, and, yeah, the and, and you And you, you can hear the audience like, oh, like well, I love especially that. Especially with the title so that cheesy. you're like, I don't really know what this title has to do with the play. Right, she's right? not French. I wonder why. Like, I wonder what that has to do. There was some confusion at first because I know that I was just coming off of Amelie. And some people were like, ooh, another French play. Here you go again. <laughs> <laughs> look at you. Oh, look at her. She just loves France. <laughs> and you're, um, you are not the Parisian woman. No. You are Rebecca. I'm Rebecca. That's, Rebecca a, that's your character. Yes. She is very ambitious and like she's like a rising politician, I guess. Yes, incredibly driven. I, I think represents the sort of very woke community woke. of young people mm -hmm. who are ready to take on the world. and literally insert themselves into the history of our nation, mm -hmm. making room for themselves where mm -hmm. room is not allowed for them. Mm -hmm. And so can you relate to that driven? Are you, are you, are you, that, you seem like a very focused girl. I, I am. I mean, I think what's, what's great about Rebecca is I'm, I'm playing a woman who is contemporary, who's, who's my age, who right. lives in this world. She's much, much more savvy than I am, in, in, at least in law and the political field. Mm -hmm. So playing someone where I sort of like knew that she was much smarter than me in that <laughs> area mm -hmm. was a little bit intimidating, mm -hmm. but it's that great actor thing where you get to really dive in and do the research. And I got a, a like a very, dense book about constitutional law because I thought, why not? Why not? And, why not? you know, it was helpful for a little bit. How'd that go? Did you really dig into that? Well, I, I mean, I did. Like, I did. I, and, and I think at the end of the day, like, the experience of trying to immerse yourself in somebody else's world mm -hmm. is always, and some, not always, is sometimes more valuable than, like, facts, right? Okay. Than just, like, right. you know, oh, my character was born here, right. and this is how many things she knows, mm -hmm. and here's all the things, you know. The experience of, like, trying to study that and putting yeah. yourself in someone else's shoes is much more valuable to me right. as an right. actor. So you didn't, like, move to D.C. and <laughs> drive the Metro and, like, hang out with these, these girls? No, no, no. <laughs> Although, like, you know, I think, like, you know, I have family in D.C., so that community is not foreign to me. And uh -huh. I, think, I think being in the day and age that we are now, I've certainly become a more politically aware person. Mm. So yeah. it's, it's nice. It's nice to sort of take the reins and, like, really be responsible for my own part as a citizen. Right. So there's a very pretty blonde woman on the poster, uh, Uma Thurman, yeah, who making is that? her Broadway debut, <laughs> which is kind of crazy. She's done theater before, but this is her Broadway debut. Yeah. I mean, she's stunningly beautiful, too. I mean, what's oh. it like working with her? She's tiny, she looks gorgeous in her costumes, and I mean... She's fantastic. She is such an interesting person, really. Yeah. I mean, she's really, you know, fiery and and intelligent and witty and is an incredible listener. And she comes from a very heavy film background. Right. And, and me, having done very little film, 
it, it's fu it's fun to be in the room with someone who's just is constantly like making choices. Like mm -hmm. I feel like, it's, especially in making musicals, has been very much outside in. And going into this process, I thought to myself, this is going to be a little different. This is going to be a little bit more inside out. Right. Which which intimidated me. But then getting into the room with Uma and and just working like you know. It was very much outside in. It was like taking things and just throwing things in there and seeing how they worked as opposed to the sort of like having a discussion and then like really needing to like craft it. Like it was very like messy and broad in a great way, which kind of shook me out of my mm -hmm. uh, sort of insecurities, I mm -hmm. guess. So it was great. We had a really fun time making this show. Did she see Hamilton? I don't think she did. Did. Interesting. You didn't like walk in and rehearse and go like, so how much do you know about me? Like, <laughs> like let's talk about me. That's what I I'm do I'm sure all you want to ask about Lynn, and I'm sure you want to <laughs> ask about the Grammy, and I'm sure you want to talk about the Tonys. And Hi, uh, I'm Philip <laughs> Sue, and let's talk about me. First day, you guys. No, not, not at all. <laughs> um, no, but this is a really fun play, and yeah. I'm sure you wanted to do a play because you know, you watched careers of a lot of Broadway musical people who don't get opportunities really to do a play like this. So it yeah. seems like it's important early in your career to be like, look, I can, do, yeah. I can do different things. I think, yeah, I mean, it's always been important to me. I feel like growing up, it was always a discussion of, do I want to be more of a singer? Do I want to be more of an actor? What, like, and what is that balance? And, um, you know, like, I just, I need both. Like, I need, I need stories and I need music and, one without the other is, is always hard. But it's nice to sort of make a switch, surprise myself, keep myself on my toes. Right. It's great. And you were group 41. You're, you're yeah, you know the group. Group 41 at Juilliard. That, All right. that's what they do. And like Patty Lapone is group one. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So you're group 41. 41. 40 years after Patty. When you started at Juilliard, were you completely intimidated? Like when you came to New York, or what was that first experience like of sort of walking into those doors? I was definitely like, it was like me, two suitcases, and like the rest of the world. Like I was just so excited. I'm picturing Thoroughly Modern Millie the minute you said two yeah. suitcases. Like, yeah. What is it? Two bags, three bucks, oh, yeah. one or me, yeah. or whatever. <laughs> yeah, and right. totally. <laughs> 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 uh, musical theater. Um, no, I, I, I was like just so excited. And then the sort of, you know, the complications of being in drama school and like, why am I doing this? And what is my craft? And am I even yeah. good at this? Like all those things came yep. later. But there was like a very raw, excited young woman that you know came here when she was 18 years all old. Right. We're gonna take a quick break, and then we're gonna talk about the woman who packed those bags in Illinois. <laughs> we'll be right back. What did she bring? With Pippa Sue. <laughs> <laughs> We are back with Philippa Sue, or Pippa, Pippa, right? I mean, Philippa Pippa, yes. Philippa Pippa. I go by both. When did that nickname Pippa come along? I was named after my cousin, my cousin Philippa, who okay. lived in England. It's like and a very British name. Yes. And my right. mother lived with her and her family when, when she was in grad school. Oh, okay. And getting her master's, and my mom loved her name. And when I was born, she said, can I name my daughter after you? You'll never see each other. You live in opposite mm -hmm. parts of the world. Um, and she was like, yeah, so excited. And then she ended up actually moving to Chicago <laughs> and marrying a guy. And now, now she lives very close to So you grew up, where I grew up with yeah. Philippa around? Yeah. So I, I was Pippa and she was Philippa. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So that's sort of why and how that started. Yeah. It was like an easy way to differentiate it. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know. I, lo I, like, I love both names. And I think Pippa's easier to say, especially like when you're a little kid and you're like, you know, going in the room and you're like, yeah, my name's Philippa. Like little kids are like, what? So, right. so Pippa was always easier. I don't know. I think you probably made that name like super cool. I'm sure there's like a little like boost in like babies being named Philippa. I hope so. Well, there's also Pippa Middleton. Oh, right, her. The, <laughs> the, the princess's sister. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's I a, haven't met her. I that's, haven't met that, that, her. You're Broadway great. royalty. That's all. I bet she's great. <laughs> you haven't met her yet. She didn't come to <laughs> Hamilton? I mean, not that I know of. I thought everybody came to Hamilton. Who, I know. Well, who was the biggest, uh, like, oh my God, this person's here, like, th that you dealt with when, during the run? Well, there were, I mean, it was the craziest experience. Yeah. Because I ended up being in the room with people that I grew up yeah. admiring and, like, listening to and watching. And the president of the United States <laughs> was pretty cool. Yeah. Obama. 
it was it was great and so so amazing to be able to go to the White House and to perform there. That was incredible. But I think like for me the most like you know giddy mm -hmm. like young little girl that I had inside of me just like bursted out when when uh, Julie Andrews was there. Ah. Because like it's Julie Andrews. Julie like, Andrews. I she's how I learned how to sing. Like I would I would listen to people and I would just like try and emulate their, their voice and mm -hmm. hers was one of them. Okay, so you were a little girl growing up in Libertyville, right? Libertyville, Illinois. Illinois. Uh, your family's still there? Uh, yes, in the uh, Chicago area. How did you get introduced to Julie Andrews and all of this stuff in Broadway and musical yeah. theater? Yeah, well, um, I think, I mean, I, I was always like, you know, my family was a very musical household and my grandmother, my, my dad's mother, was a concert, was a pianist and she taught, she taught piano. And she um, always wanted me to be musically inclined mm -hmm. in some way. So that was sort of like a rule in my house, like pick an instrument, try it, just commit yourself to something. Okay. Um, so I played piano for quite some time. And then you know, one day I was kind of like, I think I want to take singing lessons. So that's sort of how the singing thing happened. And of course, you know, one of my first songs that I sang was Feed the Birds. There you go. But you know, as like as a twelve year old trying to sing, <laughs> trying to sing that was hilarious because like I had no low notes. Right. So right. I was always just like, feed the birds, <laughs> top in the bag, feed the birds. Like I couldn't reach those notes. <laughs> and it's funny, like looking back at it, because you can really like track your progress, right? When you learn a song, right. and then like ten years later, you're like, I can't believe I couldn't even sing those right. notes, right? So, um, but I grew up seeing theater, Shakespeare. My mother worked at a, at a European repertory company, so we were always going there to see stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so the theater and music thing, like sort of always, you know, they never really intertwined, but mm -hmm. they always were there in my life. And then once I got to high school, um, I auditioned for the musicals, did those. Right, so let's talk about these musicals because right. I've read the list and <laughs> I, uh, can we Is just talk about- Is there a list? About, there's a list. Well, you, you were in Cats, is that correct? We did Cats. You did Cats in yeah. high school, which I love that high schools do Cats, but yeah. who did you play in Cats? I played Demeter. Okay, so what I know of Cats is there's a <laughs> lot of back drama, there's all sorts of like weird sexual relationships between, there's all sorts between of like- Between the Cats? Oh my God, if you, if well, you sat down with the cast that. of Cats, you would, your mind would explode. Well, did, yeah. Did you write a backstory for Demeter? Well, um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I was definitely um, more concerned with the fact that I was just wearing like this crazy spandex cat suit. Costume, okay. And How realistic were these costumes in high school? Did they look like the look, Broadway cats costumes? Look, we did our best, okay? <laughs> and it was great. Like it was probably really great. Was it? Like not maybe a little bit embarrassing. I I don't know. I've sort of like chosen not to go back down that road and like. Are there photographs and video from cats? There's to somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. Okay. Somewhere. I'm gonna have to draw. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to your high school and dig these out of the the folder. You know, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. No, I mean I I mean I went to a public high school, but they were certainly like very much interested in um, promoting the arts. So uh -huh. we had we always had a lot of really great resources and a lot of really talented kids. Uh huh. But for cats like just like a lot of high school students in spandex it just like makes just like a little bit of a weird situation <laughs> maybe weird in a good way maybe weird in a bad way uh, i don't know did it bring know. everyone closer together definitely <laughs> we were all very close that's for sure yeah and doing our own makeup just being like ah what am i doing i don't know and how was the hoofing how was the dancing how was the jellicle ball it was great <laughs> Living From what life. I can remember, <laughs> <laughs> it was it was Jellicle. Wow, as it as it should be. Yeah, and you also Guys and Dolls, Oklahoma, right? Yeah, oh my yeah. gosh, you know. Yeah, I do my research. You know a lot. Uh, any uh, any fun notable roles? A uh, Pippin? Yeah. Pippa and Pippin? Yes. Pippa did Pippin. Pippa did Pippin. <laughs> Say that eight times fast. <laughs> and played what? I mean, are there any like really juicy roles in any I of these? I played the leading player in Pippin. Wow, look yeah. at that. And Sarah Beef. Brown in Guys and Dolls. Wait, so you femaleized the leading player. I did it. 
before before patina <laughs> who was amazing <laughs> patina but was miller before she won her tony for doing it she had come to libertyville illinois <laughs> and paid attention you she had magic to do huh you were yeah. Did you, did you have like the Fosse moves and? Yeah, we did. We did Fosse. I mean, like <laughs> it was it was great. I mean, we took it to because um, every year the Illinois Theater Festival yeah. happens, and so we took it to festival. We wow. performed it there. It was like a big deal. It was yeah. a really big deal. And I was I was a sophomore at that point, so that was like huge. I mean, it's so funny to talk about, right? But it's like at, at that age, you're just like, wow, like I can't believe that I'm getting to do this. Yeah. And also at the age when you're thinking like, do I want to do this with my life? Like mm -hmm. those sorts of roles become so significant to you because you think like, you, like I associate that time with being like, this is it. Like this is all, this is all I want to do ever. So did you walk into Juilliard with like, I was the leading player in Pippin. <laughs> no, they were like, great. <laughs> Here's some Shakespeare. <laughs> exactly. It feels like that, like all, you do all that fun stuff in high school and then you're in Juilliard and you're doing like serious, like, Theater. Yeah, well, sort of. I mean, uh, uh, like, so this is the first play that I've done since being in school. The but while I was in school, we were sort of like one of the first classes that experienced that time of great, of great change in the school. So we were working with a lot of new writers. We were in the room while plays were still being developed. Like that was a huge part of our education. And I feel like because of that, it sort of led me down this road of working with working with playwrights and and um, and and composers on new work mm -hmm. and it's exciting for me like yeah. I, I love I love the classics I love like going back and sort of like you know cracking the code of yeah. this, this piece of theater and like how can we remake it like it's a beautiful thing but I think there's also something about doing something for the first time that really like just gets me really excited mm -hmm. if you were going to tackle a classic musical theater role if somebody was like pippa we want to produce this revival any choose choose a musical oh my what, what would you want to do well sunday would be a great one in the park with george sunday in the park sunday in the park with george <laughs> full title um that would be a great that'd one. be great for you that'd be a great role um, have you sung that no i've i mean i've listened to it you, can, you know who you could do that show with Steven. your husband Stephen pasquale you know what let's take a break and we'll come <laughs> back and talk more with pippa sue And we're back with Philippa, Pippa, Philippa, Sue. Sue, how okay. you doing? How how you feeling? So great. We just mentioned this Stephen Pasquale character. Yes. Very dashing, Broadway. Untalented. Leading man. <laughs> I, I listen to that Bridges of Madison County album often. Do you mm -hmm. have you listened to that? Yes. He, that's good stuff. Well, um, self admittedly, I didn't know of any of Stephen's work before I met him. <laughs> I mean, I. I love that. Like. So we were set up and... Um, by Jonathan Groff. By Jonathan Groff, you right. know this. Famously, and married by Jonathan Groff. Yeah. Now. Yeah. It was, it was Congratulations. So Thank you. He was amazing. We were set up and I knew of him and I had met him. You never saw Rescue Me? I had never seen Rescue Me. <laughs> I had never listened to Bridges Madison because I was in Natasha Pierre while that was happening. So I never got to see it. Yeah. I was like in that tent like 24 seven. <laughs> that was mm -hmm. like my entire life. So like, wait, so astounded. the date was set up. Yes. I, Were you shown a photograph? Of, yeah, I mean like thought, oh. I like knew of him. We had met before. You'd seen him around. Right, so like did a little research. But you did your research, bef like so you were Googling and. Yeah, yeah, but I didn't wanna like, I didn't wanna do too much because I was very much interested in just like not having that sort of expectation in my mind, yeah. like just going and meeting someone right. through a person who I trusted, you know, very much with. The world with, trusts Jonathan Groff. I mean, How could you not? he is, he's the best. He was our Yenta. He like, he truly, like he truly just is a, a, an incredible person. Yeah. So anybody that he has in his life, I trust is also an right. incredible person. We, we went on a couple dates and like, as I was getting to know him, I started listening to his music and watching his shows and I was like, but can you also tell everyone that part of your research was watching him on Show People? Oh yeah. To just make sure. Part that of my research sure was knows that. so. Well, I mean, I watched <laughs> the interview with with you and Steve together, and that was like one of the first times that I was like really getting to know Steve. See that? And it's a very helpful tool. These it Show was, People It was hilarious. <laughs> I mean, that's what's so great about this show is because you really like get to the core of who people are, 
And like he was just like he was making me laugh in that Good, moment. See? So I thought like, okay, well You're this, like, this is guy good. might be something. Yeah, like he doesn't <laughs> take himself too seriously. But then of course, you know, like getting to know his work and listening to his music and then getting to see him perform for the first time was incredible. When, and when did the first time you saw him perform? I, the first production I got to see him in was, was The Rubber Bridegroom. Yeah. And I saw him sing like at events and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, was also amazed by that. Right. But like I, like, I had a total talent crush on the man that I love. And that happened like almost simultaneously in falling in love with him. But like, maybe falling in love with him happened first. Mm -mm. You know, and then I was like, wow, I have a crush on him. And <laughs> I love him. Isn't that great? <laughs> Yeah. It's so sweet. Yeah. It's, and it's, the best. it's it's uh it's almost like and I remember when you were still in Hamilton when he was doing Rubber Bridegroom. Yep. Right. And he got off really he had a, his run was very short. Yes. And he got done and then he would be, and you'd still be performing. I would still be and now you guys have swapped. Yeah. Because he's so in I'm junk. Out. He's You're in out in like a, it's like a ninety minute show ish, right? Mm -hmm. The Parisian woman and yeah. he's doing like an epic financial drama yes. tragedy, which is also fantastic. Yeah. It's uh, great. Please go see it. Yeah, it is. So, but it's nice that you guys are both like working. Yeah, we're You're, a working household. Look it's, at that. it's great. It's you know we um, we got married and then we um, we both had work you know within the next right. There's week. no honeymoon, right? So we didn't take a honeymoon, but um, it's so nice to be in the city and especially in the fall in New York and we're both working in the theater and. I don't know, there's something like romantic about that in its own way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about some of the other shows we've seen you in. So I first saw you in Natasha Pierre and The Great Comet of 1812. Full title. Yes, you did not do it on Broadway. No. You were already in Hamilton Land. Mm -hmm. So you did it at Ars Nova. You did it right after you graduated. You sort of got yeah. in there. It was my first my You'd first job. You watched that whole thing come together. Mm -hmm. That I mean, it must be crazy to think about from the first moment to what it became on Broadway. That must Yeah, have I never had any sort of like getting out of school I just wanted to be good at my job yeah so like the sort of like making it or needing to like get somewhere like that was sort of in my mind but the the beauty of that experience was there were just so many incredible artists that were very present people mm -hmm. who were really just there to make something that it made it easy to sort of just like be in that experience and not think about you know what it would lead to and mm -hmm. I mean it, maybe that's why it went somewhere right? right because we were just focused on creating something and, and telling a story right yeah and it went places it did so you actually had to make a decision I guess at some point I mean did, was there actually a moment where it was like am I doing am I going on Natasha Pierre path or Hamilton yeah was that actually like a how did that did that was that a moment yeah, I mean, a, a little bit. I mean, I think um, by the time by the time that everything was sort of like happening, it was so overlapped yeah. that um, you know my path was very very clear, um, at least in at least in my in my time in Hamilton. Yeah. Um, and Danae had kind of come on mm -hmm. um, just as it was starting. So, what was beautiful about it is that uh, you know, it, what the show did for me it also did for. Danae. Mm -hmm. Like it, it gave someone who was starting out in their life for the first time an opportunity to play an ingenue role of uh, you know a mixed soprano singing range right. in musical theater telling a story where it was culturally diverse and racially diverse mm -hmm. yet we were telling this old story from like from a classic um, novel and getting to experience that group of people that that group of artists for the first time. So like in, in all of it, it sort of felt perfect and meant to be because right. the gift that Natasha gave me was given to somebody else and mm -hmm. that felt the most right. Mm. And she killed it. She killed it, yeah. yeah. You killed it too. So Amelie, let's talk about Amelie. Yeah. We had a too short run on Broadway, right? I mean, you ran yes. for a few months. Yes. How was that whole experience for you? It was, it was sort of a very, um, beautiful, delicate show. You know, mm -hmm. it was always sort of like a delicate show to put it on Broadway. It always felt kind of like like a special show and then to, to put it in the Broadway, uh, you know, commercial theater uh -huh. and, and to really build a build an audience quickly to, to keep a show running. What, what was that, what, what's your, I mean, I can talk about it forever, but what no, you, I mean, what's your take on sort of what happened with Amelie and what was your experience like? Putting up a Broadway show is a very interesting thing because there's so many elements that that are coming together at yeah. once. It's not just about, you know, making something and then like putting it on Broadway. Like right. 
it's like how, who's going to come see it and yeah. in a commercial run you're right. sort of like really trying to figure out like where your reach is yeah we tried our best we gave it our all it was like a beautiful little quiet show mm -hmm. but it just you know it didn't it didn't last as long as we yeah. wanted it to but i think from from my perspective if i thought in my mind that like i knew that we were going to have a short run and it was going to be this like beautiful special moment on broadway mm -hmm. it would have been a perfect experience because right. We had great houses, they were mostly full, we were like enjoying ourselves right. on the weekends and like it was, a sh it was another short show so we had time to sort of like decompress at the end of the day, uh -huh. like it was a great job and then on top of that, more importantly, the actual work was just so fulfilling because uh -huh. especially after the election and as you know 2017 began to unfold, it became clear that um, we needed our hearts a little bit more, mm. that there was so much anger and um, at least at least for me, I was just like so exhausted by all of it that yeah. like getting back to like really simple, um, beautiful things became very important. Mm. And that show, that show really did that for me. Mm. It kind of like got me out of that like, ugh, like what is the state of the world mentality and just into like love and kindness and small gestures mean big things. Right. You know. So Amelie was basically your therapy. She was, and she was like a little like, you know, there's this saying, um, if you've ever studied clown, um, which is like letting the little guy drive. Mm. And I think like she was definitely like my little guy, like my little, my little person always just being like, come on, you can do it. Like, <laughs> come on, let's go. Like, let's find the joy. So I, I was grateful that for that experience. Awesome. Yeah. It's good. I mean, I mean, everything is a uh, experience and everything is a learning opportunity, right? And it's, it's just amazing how much you've been able to experience and learn in such a condensed period of time. Yeah, it's crazy. It's an education for sure. But I like I, th I think most importantly in any process, it's just great to remember that like then like to be in the now because you never know what's going to mm -hmm. happen. So when you have free time, enjoy your free time. When you are really really busy, enjoy being really busy because mm -hmm. you never know what's going to happen. Right. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's a great life lesson. It is. In, yeah. in anything that you do, I guess. Yeah. You know, you don't yeah. need to be, a, you know, a crazy gypsy actor to have that mentality, I guess. Do you uh, set goals for yourself? Do you think about, like, where I want to be in five years and ten years and career-wise? And, like, what, what do you want to do? What's your, what's the dream? Um, I want to have, I, I want to always be surprising myself and to have a body of work that I think has uh, elements of every necessity, right? Which is the, the cathartic experience, as well as the joyful experience, as well as music, as well as comedy, as well as drama, as well as film, as well as television. Mm -hmm. Like I just want, I want the sort of like grab bag of a career. Right. And I don't know what that means next, but certainly, you know, I, I, w I always want my collaborations to be meaningful. The nice thing about your career is if you want to EGOT, and I think maybe you should. EGOT. Because why not? <laughs> you already have the Grammy done It's a verb with, now. And that's like the hardest one to get for, I mean, you're a talented actor, so getting the, the EOT won't be hard. You got the G, you oh got the God. Grammy. It's crazy. <laughs> you have a Grammy, right? It's you actually so have a Grammy in your, in your home. You have a in, Grammy. Yeah, it's like yeah. sitting in our house. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, it's, Look it's at you. like, I know. I can't even believe it. <laughs> world well I can't wait to see you tackle the other letters of the alphabet and Thank everyone you. the Parisian woman is fantastic play uh, and Philippa Sue is wonderful in it and there's all kinds of fun secrets and twists and it's very sexy and it's very uh, now it's very exactly it's very now it's very now go and enjoy the audience gasping when they say the title it's true <laughs> there's a lot of gasping that happens yeah there's a lot of moments a lot of fun yeah thank you so much for being here thank you so for great having to me. see you yeah you uh, too. everyone thank you for watching we'll see you next time